Thank you so much, John. Hi, I'm Peter, co-founder of Travel AI, and we use artificial intelligence to tell the story of everyday mobility. Train companies don't know who their passengers are. The first time they get to know they've inconvenienced a passenger is when this happens. But a train company with our technology embedded in its app would be able to identify which customers have been, have been affected by disruption and would be able to offer them a personalized service to soften, a personalized uh, offer to soften that anger. Uh, to be able to avoid a public dressing down and crucially improving those customer satisfaction statistics that will help them win their next franchise. And that's all the more important because we're seeing a, um, a shift in mobility towards convenient and personalized services on demand. No wonder, then, that Uber wants to be the Amazon of transportation, a platform built on top of existing operator services that threatens to relegate them to behind the scenes. It's straight out of the tech giant's playbook, just like Gary said. Using customer data to totally dominate a sector. But transport data is notoriously fragmented, stuck in single modes, and at the level of the asset, not the passenger. Travel AI generates detailed travel behavior data uh, for on each of our clients' end users. Our mobile phone software studies speed, location, and pattern of movement to automatically understand, detect the route and the mode of transport without any input from the individual. It's taken us six years and one million pounds of investment to develop this technology and to maintain our market-leading position in terms of accuracy, automation, uh, and, uh, and granularity. But our customers can embed that software in their uh, mobile phone apps with just a few lines of code. We know from our work with cities that they need our multimodal data to effectively manage change. We've got a live trial with a mass market car maker, and we're in talks with a multinational looking to transition into a mobility company. And I'm delighted to be able to tell you that we've just agreed a deal with the UK's leading bus and train company, Go Ahead. We're a team of engineers with heavyweight advisors and sector-specific specialisms. But we want to join, join forces with you to help write the story of mobility. Please talk to me if you know, train, if you know uh, transport companies that want to get ahead with customer data. Or if you're interested in our upcoming seed round, uh, which with potential to unlock synergies across your mobility portfolio. We're passionate about improving transport with data. A, a market with transport systems catapult sees at 32 billion pounds. We see a future where customers will expect personalized mobility services on demand, and it will be totally normal for mobility operators to embed travel AI to deliver that every day. Uh, hi, Jacqueline here from MMC Ventures. Uh, thank you, great talk. I have a question. Um, which different data sets do you access uh, and how do you access them? So uh, we start by not wanting to be dependent on any data sets. So we use the sensors on the mobile phone to generate the profile about how a customer is moving around. We use the accelerometer, GPS, cell tower information, magnetometer, uh, whatever we can use to be able to build that profile up about how, about being able to identify what mode of transport somebody's using um, and the route that they've taken. Now, in different applications, so I was speaking to a consultancy yesterday that's looking at um, uh, electric vehicle charging points. And they want to uh, blend the data that they're going to have about util the utilization of these electric charging points with the customer data that our software can develop. So after that initial uh, processing, we can then blend it with other data sets to provide uh, utility depending on the use case. So, so just a follow-up question on that. Um, so, I think similar to a question asked to the previous company, do you then aggregate um, a user's data, I guess, on different apps? That's you. No, your so then, not on different apps. Oh, so, we, uh, so yes, we we we're not an app development company. We have an SDK that 
can be embedded in our clients' apps. So, so um, I might be using multiple of your clients' app, right? So you that would be wonderful. That would be yeah. yeah. That would be wonderful. So at the moment, we uh, we have no way of identifying uh, that someone over here is the same person as someone over here, and that's because in one use case, uh, the client might want their customers to be anonymous. They don't want to gather the email addresses. They don't want to handle that personal data. So we wouldn't be able to, to, to match these people at the moment. But that's the problem that we look forward to having when our technology is in multiple apps on your phone. Do you know what um, percentage of customers use operator apps? So for the likes of Go Ahead or Southwest Rail, what percentage of Southwest Rail's customers would have the Southwest Rail app? Uh, so I don't know how the percentages of Southwest Rail. Um, with uh, so so that varies, um, and a the, the ability for our technology to be embedded within their app is the. It, it can be embedded either within their journey planning capabilities or within their ticketing capabilities. So regardless of what service they're offering their customer, we can go within that. And um, uh, so for um, uh, customers who are looking to buy tickets from that, so from that operator, we can collect all of their data, whereas commuters and so on, they might be getting the information through a journey planner app. Thank you.